Hello, I'm Nico, and today I'm going to interview Bob Phillips. What What are you doing down here in Crystal Beach? Well, I came to, to interview the, uh, the the Tiki Man, the Tiki Carver guy. For what show? Texas Country Reporter. It's the longest running independently produced syndicated show in the country. We've been on for 40 years just traveling around the back roads of Texas, finding guys like this that are just out doing what they do and telling their story. Just uh, ordinary people doing sometimes ordinary things, sometimes extraordinary things. Uh, how many shows do y'all do? Well, we do, um, we do 26 brand new shows every year. There's usually about three different stories on every half hour show. And then we remix those all together for the other 26 to, to make the 52 episodes of every year. And like I said, we've been doing it for 40 years. So you, can, uh, you might be better at math than I am, but it's a whole lot of shows. And what, what made you get started with this? I was a news reporter uh, at a CBS affiliate in Dallas, and I hated fires and wrecks and, and uh, murders and you know, other human destruction and wanted to do something positive, wanted to do stories about people doing good stuff. And uh, it seemed like, you know, just by necessity, the news is all about, all about bad stuff for the most part. It's, you know, all of, the, all of the turmoil and all of the human tragedy in life. And we thought, well, there's, there's a lot more of the good stuff that goes on. So, you know, we'll go out and do stories like that. And we haven't run out of material yet. So how did you find Tiki Loco? <laughs> somebody uh, somebody sent us an email about this guy. And it's kind of funny because when we first started back back 40 years ago doing this, nobody knew who we were, what we were doing. We were just on our own. And we would literally just get in our old van, our old beat-up Ford Econoline van back then, and just go out in some direction. Today we're going to go south. Today we're going to go east. Today we're going you know, west or north. And we'd go to some small town and just look around till we found somebody interesting. Well, now, ever since email came about, that changed everything. And now we get hundreds of emails every day from all the people who watch our show. And they all have, uh, they all have suggestions of people that they want to see on the show. Somebody uh, sent us an email and said, you know, you, you ought to talk to this guy. He's really interesting. He's just on the side of the road there making these, these carvings. And uh, if you stop and talk to him, you're going to find out it's, he's got a real backstory, and we like that. We like the backstory. I don't know what that is yet because I haven't, uh, you know, just got here and haven't had time to talk to him yet. But I'm sure there is one. He's an interesting guy. How long do they usually take per location? We are. We will typically um, be someplace. We'll get there early in the morning, and we'll be there until dark. You know, most of the time. Uh, sometimes we may go into a second or third day, just depending on on the story and how difficult that particular story is. Uh, there are some stories that they all just kind of happen in one place at one time and you might be out of there in a few hours. But um, one of the things our TV show is known for is its photography and its editing. Uh, we've always taken a lot of pride in that and always tried to get people that, that uh, really have an eye on, on the photography side. In the beginning, I was the photographer. And then I thought, well, I gotta get somebody better than me. So I, uh, I got other people to, to uh, start traveling with me. You know, I, I was by myself in the beginning. And um, so we have this crew of people that, that travel around and we all have our, our job to do and we can each do each other's job if necessary. And uh, we, we go out and spend a day with somebody. Typically, we will shoot these stories, a uh, whole bunch of them over a, you know, one or two week period. For instance, you know, we're here on Crystal Beach today. We've been over in, on Galveston Island all week and uh, we've been doing stories over there all week long. Now, next week we'll probably be, you know, in the Texas Panhandle or deep south Texas or far west Texas or something like that. And we'll spend a week or two there shooting a bunch of stories. Then eventually we go back and we mix all those together. So you might have this one with with a story on somebody else in 
Amarillo, Texas, and somebody else in Brownsville, Texas. You know, um, when it's mixed up, it kind of looks like you know we traveled from way up here to way down there and way over there. You know, but in reality, we shot all of those in, that were way down there all at one time, and those that were way up there all at all at one time, and then just mixed them together. Have y'all been to Crystal Beach before? This? We have several times. The last the last story we did here was just right over there, um, right after Hurricane Ike, just, and you saw it, you know, the, pretty much wiped this this beach clean. Most of the houses were destroyed, and a uh, lot of them just gone. You couldn't even find them. And we came down here when they started rebuilding and did a story on an Amish craftsman. Uh, some of the Amish people came down here from Missouri and were building back some of these houses that got blown away in the in the last hurricane uh, because the the Amish have a way of building that uh, can withstand you know heavy wind and rain and all of that some of those Amish barns have, have been standing for 200 years so somebody down here got the bright idea that if we want our houses to last maybe we ought to build them like the Amish but nobody knew exactly how the Amish do it so they went up and got some Amish guys and and uh, brought them down here and got them to, to help build their houses back. Interesting thing, you know, the Amish people don't drive. You know, they, they use horses and buggies. And so they can ride in a car, but they can't drive a car. So people physically had to go all the way up to Missouri and get these Amish folks, these craftsmen, and put them in a car and drive them down here so they could help build these houses. That was the last story we did here on Crystal Beach. Well, we've done several over the years. Uh, how often do y'all go back to the same places? Well, Texas is a big place, obviously. And uh, so it all depends. But, you know, we may, we may do a story someplace, and while we're there, we'll see another story. And if we don't have time to do that other story while we're there, then we may just make a note of it. And next time we get anywhere in the general vicinity, we'll say, well, let's go back over to Crystal Beach and do that story we saw. And so you never know. Or it may be that, you know, we do all the stories that, uh, that we wanted to do, and it may be a couple of years before we get back to a, to a certain location. It, it, I've, I've been in every town in Texas over the, over the years that we've been doing this, every little town, every big town, every single town in the state. And not, we haven't done a story in every town, but uh, we've done stories in every county, of course, but we haven't done a story in every little bitty town, but we've been through all of them. And uh, so we just keep, just keep traveling around. People ask us all the time, well, how come you don't run out of stories? It's because we do stories about people, not places. And they keep making new people. <laughs> so long as they keep making new people, then we have new stories. I did a story the other day on somebody, and I realized that, that I'd been doing this show almost 20 years when they were born and you know they were, they were somebody that was about 20 years old and I thought you know these people were born when I'd been doing this show you know almost 20 years and so you never know who you're going to find or what kind of interesting story somebody has to tell. How long do they usually take from start of shoot till air till you put it on TV? That's a that's a good one too because uh, for instance we shot a story yesterday over in Galveston that is going to be on the air in less than a month from right now. But we shot a story the day before that that'll probably be on the air five or six months from now. We could get them on the air very quickly, but they don't always work out that way. Typically what happens is, on average, we'll spend a full day of shooting with somebody. And just to let you know, we don't do a lot of research before we go somewhere. If they have a website, we may look at a website. We, we call them up, talk to them for a few minutes on the phone to find out, you know, what, what kind of personality do they have. But other than that, we don't, we don't do much. We don't write a script or anything like that ahead of time because what happens here dictates what that script is going to be. It's well, well you, you, you never know who can show up here. You never know, and that's just it. I mean, since we've been here, you know, two or three people that we weren't planning on have shown up. And so we'll work all of that into the, that final script. So after we spend a full day of shooting, then we go back to our office eventually. When I'm not sure when we're going to get back yet, but, you know, sometime in the next few weeks we'll get back to the office. 
and we'll sit down and we'll look at every frame of everything we shot. We'll make a log of it. We write everything down. We write down everything everybody says. And then the, the, the creative writing process starts. And you, you try to link all those things, all those pictures, and all those things that people said in your script, just you know, telling what the story is. And that takes another day or two or you know, whatever it takes. And then you sit down and you start editing. And where you put all those pictures together with all the sound and all the... You know, uh, the sound bites from people, the, the things that they said and things that happened, and eventually you, you end up. The total process is a little more than a week for every story we do. Uh, I'd say on average it takes about eight days of full days of work for every six to eight minute story that we do. Okay, so uh, I really don't. Can't think of anything else to ask. So, yep. uh, do, do y'all have a website? We have a website, TexasCountryReporter.com. Do you have a Facebook? We 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 are on Facebook, Facebook slash Texas Country Reporter. Uh, there's in fact Facebook is is another new tool for us that has just been tremendous because uh, now a lot of our story ideas will come to us from people who are the people who join our Facebook site. Um, they're really avid viewers of our show, so they, they get it. They understand what we're looking for because they've seen it so much. Those people are invaluable to us because uh, they know what we're looking for. We're looking for people with passion, people that do something extraordinary, uh, uh, just, you know, cool people. And uh, so a lot of our story ideas come to us from, from our Facebook friends. Uh, uh, some of them come to us, like I said, just on uh, on email, and then some of them just come from driving around. I, I'll be driving down the road, you know, between from one story to the next, and I'll say, what the heck is that over there? And I've got to pull over and go over and look at whatever it is and talk to whoever and and find out. You know, just the other day over here in Galveston, we're driving along the beach over on the seawall, and we look out where the, where the water is, and right between us there's a bunch of rocks, and somebody has taken the rocks and started stacking them and making like rock sculpture and we said well what the heck is that you know this what, so we stopped and we asked a bunch of people around nobody seemed to know anything we finally found one guy that worked at a little cafe across the street and he says yeah that's just different people that come down here they started doing it a year or two ago they just started stacking these rocks and it, they've stayed like that so we shot it and did a story on it what what do you think the one of the strangest things you've done a story on is it would have to be the statue in a in a uh, Paris Texas cemetery um, it's a it's a big statue that's over somebody's grave and it's the statue is of Jesus and if you look closely Jesus is wearing cowboy boots <laughs> that might be the strangest thing we've ever seen all right well thanks for talking en enjoyed being on the Nico show <laughs> <laughs> Th thanks for watching Nico Show. See you next time. Bye.